Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel this morning. Welcome to those of you worshiping with us online. I'm Mindy Gokenauer, the pastor here, where we are seeking to build and grow relationships with our community in order to meet needs, proclaim the gospel, and develop faith. We have a lot coming up here in the life of the church, and I wanted to share some of those things with you this morning. Our hospitality team has some needs as we uh, get really close two weeks away from Easter. Um, and also uh, help beyond. So in your bulletin, you will find uh, this bright colored piece of paper um, that describes our hospitality needs on it. Um, And if you would be willing um, to serve on our hospitality team, you can fill the bottom of that out and drop it at uh, at the welcome desk, which is in the center of the room in the lobby. Next to it, you will find um, some needs that we have for Easter. Um, So we know that we have additional guests with us uh, at Easter time. And so there's a little half, this is not even a half sheet. What is this, quarter sheet? Okay, quarter sheet um, of paper that has some suggested items on it that we might need for Easter. So if you'd be willing to help us out in that area, that would be great. And if you are making homemade items, if you would be so kind as to include what is in them, the ingredients, uh, that would be so helpful as we care for one another's needs. This Friday, believe it or not, uh, we will be having a movie night here at the church. We will be watching Jesus Revolution, and I think... We are turning your attention to the screen for a clip of the movie. Hey, Square. I am not a square. I think we should invite Greg this weekend. What's this weekend? These people are hippies, rebels against old-fashioned authority. I think these kids need help. They need is a bath. You're passing judgment on people you know nothing about. Maybe that's why your church is so empty. When God walks in here, brings me a hippie. I'll ask him what it's all about. Because I do not understand. This house has a very good vibe. There is an entire generation searching. Slow down, man, slow down. Just in all the wrong places. If you want to reach my people, you need to speak to them in a language they understand. If I bring them in, does my job. We can only walk through doors open to us. In your church, that's a door that's shut. You've probably noticed we have some guests here today. I'd like you to meet my new friends. Welcome. They don't belong here. Half of them aren't wearing shoes. They're staining the new shag carpet. They need our help. If you feel like you're misunderstood and judged, you will find forgiveness and freedom right here. That was awesome! Now that door is open any time of day. And if there are some who don't like that, well then, that door works both ways. All right, Pastor, let's begin. I was almost done with this, but then you did what nobody else would even dare. This thing that we found, I feel like I belong. You're gonna need a bigger church. country is a dark and divided place, but now there's hope and it's spreading. This is your home and I want you to tell all your friends about it. Jesus Revolution is based on true events that happened in California in the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, You can read more about that um, from an article that was published in Time magazine. I encourage you to come and join us this Friday for the movie, and we will have child care and a child uh, movie as well, so please come and be a part of that. Um, We do have some tickets that I will grab from my office. Um, As a little reminder, they're beautiful. You can put them on your fridge. Um, The event is completely free, um, but if you take one, it'll give us an idea of how many to expect on Friday. So please uh, put that on your calendar and plan on joining us this Friday. Holy Week begins a week from today uh, with Palm Sunday, and our service next week will be combined. Um, So if you come at 845, you'll be early, which is okay. Um, I always remind our second service folks that if they come at their regular time, they will have missed worship. Um, You will not miss worship. You'll just be early. Um, But it will be 930 next week, and our choir will be uh, sharing their Easter cantata with us. So we are excited for that. Um, We will have services then on um, Thursday the 28th and Friday the 29th. 29th for Monday Thursday and Good Friday. 
On Easter Sunday, we will have three services, one at 6.30 out at Adams Rickey Park um, at the gazebo, and then our regular 8.45 and 10.45 services. So I encourage you to come and be a part of Holy Week with us. It is time to register for camp. Um, summer camp is a great way to um, connect with others and to connect with God. I encourage you um, from young and to old, um, wherever you fall in that category, there is a camp for you. Um, there is camping information out uh, in the lobby at the white table and Carol Armstrong can uh, help you if you have any questions about the camping program. My last reminder is that tomorrow is the last day to order, actually I have two more things. Um, tomorrow's the last day to order Easter eggs, so if you haven't ordered them yet and you want them, get your orders in. Um, if you would like to purchase eggs, um, a dozen or less, you can do that this morning down the hallway um, as you exit the lobby. And then our um, children's community Easter egg hunt is also next Sunday at 2 p.m. Um, we are in need of some more eggs. Uh, filled eggs, so there's empty eggs out in the lobby. If you're able to help us and fill some of those, um, we would appreciate those being back here by Thursday. If you have any questions, you can contact uh, Jen Maliniak, who is our children's director. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this time and space for the ability to worship together online. God, we are humbled that we are able to take time to give you time out of our day to worship you for who you are. So may our worship that we've prepared be honoring and pleasing to you in your holy name. Amen. As you are comfortably able, would you please stand and join us for the call to worship. Open the gates where the righteous enter. We give you thanks, for you have answered us. You have become our salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's love endures forever. Let us join our voices together as we sing our opening hymn number 400, Come Thou Found. seated. Would you join me in our congregational prayer? Loving, living God, be among us now. Show us your ways. Guide our steps. Live in us that we may be people of steadfast hope 
and powerful giving. Help us hear your words, challenging us to give you all the things that are yours. Help us remember that all we are and all we have are gifts from you, gifts to be shared in service and love. Holy One among us, help us be a holy people who receive your word with joy and live your message with love. Amen. Verses 12 to 17, Jesus clears the temple. Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out all the people who were buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the tables of the money chargers in the chairs of those selling doves. He said to them, the scriptures declare my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. The leading priest and the teachers of the re religious law saw these wonderful miracles and heard even the children in the temple shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. But the leaders were indignant. They asked Jesus, do you hear what these children are saying? Jesus replied, haven't you ever read the scriptures? For they say, you have taught the children and infants to give you praise. Then he returned to Bethany where he stayed overnight. Isn't it beautiful when our children lead us? One moment, I'm gonna move. Well, this is our fifth Sunday in Lent in our last Sunday of our sermon series called At the Table. 
we've been sitting at the table with Jesus to dig in what we can, into what we can learn from him. The first week, we witnessed the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 and what can happen when a small gift is offered in faith. We talked about what kind of faith we have and how we can offer God what we have and God can do, do miracles with those gifts. The second week, we, t we sat at the table with Matthew, his friends, Jesus, and the Pharisees. I challenged you to go and sit with the wrong crowd to sit at different tables and to take the message of hope and salvation to those who we know need it. The third week, we sat at the banquet table with Jesus and the Pharisees. We talked about humility and considered who we are inviting to our tables. Last week, we sat at the dinner table with Jesus as a woman came and anointed him for burial. We talked about extravagant gifts and how the most extravagant gift that we can offer to Jesus is ourselves. We end our series today by entering the temple with Jesus. Let us pray. Holy God, may you continue to move among us. May you continue to speak to us. And may we be open to listening. And as we listen, God, may we choose to respond to your word. In your holy name we pray. Amen. It's a lot easier to watch someone else get in trouble than to be the one getting in trouble. You laugh because you know. Growing up, I remember seeing my cousin get in trouble a lot. He was kind of a troublemaker. He knew how to push all of the right buttons and push all of the boundaries with his mom. I used to sit back and watch as he would get yelled at time and time again. And then one day, apparently, we got in trouble together. And for the first time in my life, I, that I remember anyway, I was sent to time out. I liked it better being a spectator to the troublemaking. We often listen to stories of Jesus scolding the Pharisees. We watch as Jesus corrects their self-righteous behavior. And while it could be us, it isn't. And we listen and we watch and we think, wow, thankfully that isn't me. But today, Jesus comes a little closer. And it's going to make us uncomfortable. I am always telling my staff and our church leadership that it's in the uncomfortable places that we learn and grow. So I invite you into the uncomfortable place of growth this morning. Jesus doesn't sit at the table today. We don't see him turn a small offering into a large miracle. We don't see him correct the Pharisees on who Jesus came for. We don't get a lesson of who is invited to the table. No, not today. Today we see Jesus enter the temple and turn the tables upside down. It might be hard to envision a temple filled with tables full of animal sacrifices. That's not typically what our worship space looks like on any given Sunday. Please don't start bringing animal sacrifices to worship. The animal si sacrifices were there because it was approaching the celebration of Passover, and many would travel to Jerusalem to celebrate. The temple had become a marketplace instead of a place of prayer, of worship. Now, again, we don't bring our animal sacrifices to our house of worship, so that image may be a bit out of reach for us. So let's paint a picture that does feel more relatable. Instead of a house of prayer, we today tend to turn this place of worship into a house of gossip, complaining, self-preservation. And we pile those things up. While we aren't selling possessions in this so-called house of prayer, we do push our own agendas. 
we bring those with us. We add them to our tables. We care more about our preferences than worshiping the God who deserves our praise. And we seek to get what we want over surrendering to the will and way of Jesus. We, like the money changers, become so distracted by our personal agendas that we often forget where we are. Our complaints over how things should be done, how things should look, who should leave, those things drive us. We forget why we come to this place. We forget Jesus. Our distractions cloud our vision from seeing what God is doing right in front of us. Our distractions cloud our vision from the Holy Spirit present within us and among us. And just like the exchange of money for sacrifices, we turn this house of prayer into a den of thieves when we make our interactions here transactional. Worship is not about what we get, or it certainly shouldn't be. Authentic worship is about praising God. Jesus isn't sitting at the table today. He's not sitting at tables piled with self-righteous agendas and personal preferences. No. No, that's not what the temple is for. And that's not what this house of prayer is for. Jesus is flipping tables upside down. Can you imagine what that moment must have felt It might feel a little like we feel right now. Where do we go from here? We could stop at this dramatic moment of Jesus turning over the tables. It's a powerful moment. But to stop at this moment would mean we miss a valuable piece of the story. Jesus turns over the tables and then he starts healing. Jesus reclaims the temple in that moment. And you know what makes that moment so profound? The children. Matthew 21 says, The leading priests and the teachers of religious law saw these wonderful miracles and heard even the children in the temple shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. But the leaders were indignant. They asked Jesus, do you hear what these children are saying? Yes, Jesus replied. Haven't you read the scriptures? For they say you have taught children and infants to give you praise. We can reclaim this house of prayer and return to authentic worship. We simply need to watch our children. Let them lead us. Our children here at Emmanuel do a phenomenal job of helping us understand what it looks like to authentically worship the Lord. They stand up on Sunday morning, as Alexis did today, leading us. They stand up and they share and shout their little, literal praises to the Lord. They lead us in worship by reading scripture and calling us to worship. They listen closely Even if we wonder if they're even paying attention, that's dangerous, right? That is dangerous. They challenge us. They challenge us to lead by example, to use kind and encouraging words to pray simply and authentically. Our children are helping us turn our hearts and our lives back to the Lord. If you didn't read our March newsletter, I share a story in my article about communion a few weeks ago here at Emmanuel. A lot of our families worship with us at our second service, and so this happened at our second service, and families were coming forward to receive communion, children with their parents during the service. And as they were coming forward, we hear our children asking questions about Jesus, about the bread and the juice, asking for more asking for the leftovers, reminding us that they already know that Jesus loves them. It was holy and chaotic and authentic. 
Church, if we want this place, this house of worship, this house of prayer to be flipped upside down, leaving behind our personal wants, preferences, and agendas, we need to praise the Lord like our children authentically and simply. Let's flip that table. After all, we, you and me, are the ones teaching our children what it means to love Jesus. They hear it first from us. They learn about the love of Jesus because someone teaches it to them and shows it to them. They return to this house of prayer week after week because someone brings them. And because someone brings them, we have the opportunity to show them Jesus and to praise Jesus together. But as adults, it's so easy to get distracted. It's easy to let our house of worship become a den of thieves when we aren't constantly turning back to God in worship and praise. Let's flip that table. Our children need us, and we need our children. We teach them about Jesus, and they remind us to worship wholeheartedly and authentically. We should be running to Jesus, never really getting enough, praising him unashamedly for who he is and what he has done for us. That is authentic worship. That is what we need to return to. What preferences, agendas, and personal wants does Jesus need to flip in you, in this church, in this community? We all have them. We all have our own preferences. We may even have our own agendas, and we have our personal wants. It's time that we name them, claim them, and let Jesus have them so that we can authentically run to him and praise him fully. This house of prayer is not about what we can gain. We are flipping that table. It's not about how pleased we feel with ourselves when we leave here. We are flipping that table. We are flipping the gossip, the self-preservation, and the need to have it our own way. This is to be a house of prayer, God's house, the place we praise God's holy name. We tend to make things complicated, but it really doesn't have to be. Praise God. The Lord. Can you say that with me? Praise the Lord. In this house, in the house of the Lord, it is that simple. We are to come together to praise the Lord. And it's why we need our children to remind us that it is really that simple. Children understand being themselves and running to Jesus. And we need to do that too, church. We need to let go of everything else and simply run to Jesus. Our children are leading us. They are showing us the way we just need to let them. So let's flip that table. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the gift of Jesus. And we thank you for the gift of our children who lead us, who help us remember that you are good, that you are God, and that you are worthy of being praised. May you flip the tables of self-preservation, of personal agendas and wants in us, that we would set those things aside, that we wouldn't pick those tables back up. God, help us to surrender our wants and our way to yours. That we would fully run after Jesus. And as we come before you this morning, God, we bring with us our joys and our concerns. God, we lift up Sue Walker to you who is entering treatment again for her cancer, and I ask God that you would be with her and that you would pour out your healing to be upon her. And we lift up all of those who are struggling 
and suffering for those who are feeling alone, abandoned, and forgotten. And we lift up Brian Shank, who had a heart attack last week and is home recovering now. We ask God that you would continue to pour out your healing upon him. And we lift up Evelyn to you as a sister-in-law of Tris Rhodes, and we ask God that you would pour out your healing upon her. God, we know that you know our concerns that we carry with us, and so we give those over to you, trusting, God, that you hear and that you are at work, that you're moving among us. And so, God, as we surrender to you here in this place, we join our voices together as one body to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so, church, we are called this day to act, to respond to what we've heard this morning. And so I urge you to name in yourself your personal wants, your personal agenda, your personal preferences that Jesus needs to flip in you, that you might be able to fully run to him. I also invite you this morning to give of your tithes and offerings as you feel led to do so. And you can give online, or as you leave, you will find an offering plate in the back. And as we consider how we might respond this morning, I invite you to stand and join in singing the doxology. Holy God, we thank you for who you are and how you always provide for what we need. And so as an act of faith, as a sacrifice before you here and now, we give you back just a piece of what you have given to us. May you pour out your blessing upon our tithes and our gifts and our offerings. May they be used to honor and glorify you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as you are able to join in singing our closing hymn.
may you go now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, allowing the tables of self-preservation to be flipped in you, that you might run towards Jesus. Go in peace. Amen.